today we broke a new record in my trading career the biggest loss that i have ever had fifty five thousand three hundred dollars and i'm actually down more than that because this is just realized losses but we're going to go over this in this video we're going to talk about tesla which i'm still bullish on my pattern is still in play everything that we look for is still holding so while it's been a little ugly everything is still good does it mean that this is going to be one of the 20 percent of the times that this fails could be but i'm still going to trade it because i'm going to trade what's in front of me so let's talk about how first of all i think tesla's going to bounce back up to 200 dollars by middle to end of june at this moment we still have our break of structure pattern that is in play you guys can see at the top right of your screen that when this pattern plays out over the past 150 times which is how many times this pattern has happened we can see that we have had 120 times that it has bounced up into our target zone and we've seen that there's 33 times that it has pulled back into our stop loss zone so as we said before this is a high win rate but it doesn't mean that we have to actually come into this target we can go back here and see that this was a pattern that most recently failed we should have had an 80 percent chance of moving back down into this lower low and that didn't happen but overall in most cases, this will run into its target and hit about 80% of the time, but there will be failures. Now, at this point, we had this pullback into the support level of $172, and you can see that it looked like after this bounce and strong China sales that we were going to see a push through $188 and potentially hit this target much quicker than I initially anticipated. This is why I did not close out my June calls. I was up 50% and I probably should have closed those out and then taken the money and rolled it, which just means opened up a July call because now we're less than a month until the expiration of these contracts and I would really not like to have Theta Decay kill them. Now, what is this break of structure thing that we're talking about in the first place? If you guys go into your indicator section, you can just type in chart prime and you will find an indicator called smart money breakouts. Once you click that on, it is going to bring up a table and there's going to be a ton of different options that you guys can mess with. If you guys want to know all of our options, you can become part of our community. The link will be in the description. We have all of our PDFs and courses and real time alerts and stuff over there. And so you can see that when these resistances are broken, which we had back over here on Monday, 20, the 29th of April, that 80% of the time we will push up into higher highs. And so this is where that pattern initially happened. The dotted line is where our stop loss is, but I actually just put a little rectangle there because I think it's easier. And then the dotted line at the top is going to be where we're going to take our profit. But I like to put a box there because I like to use target zones. And basically, when this breakout occurs, we are going to wait for price to pull back down into a support level. We are going to look to accumulate shares within this range. I definitely started accumulating too early. And then we're going to look to take profits up at this target level. So what I think is going to happen is price is going to continue to reject as we did at 184, probably pull back to this 172 level. Maybe we'll squeeze a little bit more, which this is why I'm probably gonna have to roll my position over because we could just squeeze till the beginning of June. So we could have like a lays of just sideways movement potentially. But I do think that once that squeeze releases, we will see Tesla back above $203. And this is my realistic timeline, which is about 22 days, maybe 30 days. And this lines up with the 15th or 14th of June, which is when my contracts expire. So that's why I will probably end up rolling them over if we end up continuing to consolidate. But at this point, I'm still holding on to my share or holding on to my contracts and my calls. So at this point, too, where's my stop loss going to be? Well, we know that we have this swing low point here. So my stop loss is going to be a daily candle closure. So one of these candles closing fully under $160.50. So if we come down and we just like sit in this level, I'm not going to close. We need a full break because if this break occurs, we're definitely going to fill the gap all the way back down to $148. But I don't think that that's going to happen just yet. I think that we will get the bounce and I do think that we will see Tesla up at $200 by middle of June. Now, let's cover some losses. So like I said, today was one of my biggest losing days that I've ever had in my career. And I want to share with you guys not each and every single trade that went through because it's just going to be boring for most of you and it's really not needed. 
but I want to share with you guys the idea of overcoming losses and how you can assess your losses. So in the beginning of my trading career, I tried to avoid losses like the plague. I never wanted to look at my losing trades. I never wanted to focus on them because I knew that number one, every time I was losing in the market, I felt that I was a loser in real life. And I know that that sounds dumb, but if you're somebody who has self-deprecating tendencies like to treat yourself like crap and talk to yourself like crap and many people will say like not the case but you know every time you've lost money you have probably cursed yourself out worse than you would ever talk to somebody else and so we do have this malicious intent towards ourselves especially when we lose money and so i never wanted to look at my losers but then i realized that if you treat this like a business all businesses have to look at sales metrics. They all have to look at the incomes and or income statements and balance sheets and how much capital the company's spending. Like you have to understand this. You have to be on top of your finances or a company would never survive. And it's the same case it comes to your trading. And I'm not promoting a trade journal. I don't promote any of these companies. Not that they're good or bad. It's just that I don't have affiliations with anybody. But I do think that you should be definitely trading on your own, like or your own by hand. But you should really just be watching what your average return is, how long you're usually holding a trade. And my biggest thing is like, are you really stopping out when you should be stopping out? And so I wanna share with you guys like through these losses today, nothing that I did inherently was wrong. All of these losses happened because their patterns ultimately failed. Let's just look at DraftKings where between both of these DraftKings positions, I lost about $28,000. So if we go to look at this trade, you're going to see that just like Tesla, we had the same exact break of structure set up and you can see too at the top right side of your screen that about as 50 times that this has happened, 37 of them were winners. So we had a really high win rate, but that doesn't mean that we're going to win. You know, if we pulled back, we were looking to enter around this level, but even though we could have gotten that bounce, this pattern just totally gave out. And so we have to close, but we didn't do anything wrong in this instance. What would have been wrong is if I didn't close this trade out today and I was like, you know what? Instead, I'm gonna set a stop loss at lower low. And then I'm gonna wait for this to come into the lower low and then I'll stop out. And then once it comes into that lower low, then you just don't end up stopping out because you're like, you know what, it has to bounce. The only thing that you should be focusing on once you have a proven winning system is just executing that system to perfection. Because as we stated earlier, we can go through and find a couple of examples where patterns just didn't work out. For instance, here's one right here. In this example, we get this break of structure, we get price that pulls down into a lower low, moves up into this next area. This would have been an absolute glorious short right here. And then you would have looked to short, maybe you took your profits at equal lows, but if you didn't, then this would have been a losing trade. But as long as you sold here, you didn't do anything wrong. Like you're the one controlling the market. And I try to explain this to so many people. You know, it's funny, like I'm not doing well. Everyone likes to be like, oh, you're not doing well. But then when I'm doing well, everyone's like, dude, you're the goat. You're so great. But not me doing any of it. Like I'm not doing this. If you really think about it, even this stellar short that we have here on DraftKings, right? Even if you would have hit this 15 to one RVR, I didn't do anything. I didn't move the market. All we're doing is just waiting for it to retrace, waiting for a sell off or using market structure. I'm not moving the market. Like that's what I'm trying to explain more than anything is that when you take a big loss or you take a string of wins, whatever it is, realize that like not necessarily who we're playing these patterns and we're playing the strategy and we're letting the strategy play out. What is wrong is if you go against the strategy, that's when you need to be worried. And that's when you need to sit down with yourself and say, Hey, we're not in control here. This goes for investing. This goes for swing trading, anything that you're doing. So I hope this video helps, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions, if you guys want me to go over any other stocks or tickers, and I will be coming to you guys later on this week with some you know, companies I'll be watching for the next couple of weeks. Thanks for all the support. I'll see you guys next time.